Hello viewers, I have another definite integral for you today. This time it's the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of e to the sine x times sine of 2x uh, with respect to x. Now, the first thing I would like to do here is use a double angle identity on this sine of 2x. Uh, and that's going to kind of reveal a path forward. So it's the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of e to the sine x times, uh, well, our standard result for sine of 2x is that it's 2 sine x cos x. Okay, now I'm just going to do one more thing to this. I'm not really changing anything. I'm just kind of reordering the terms for now. Um, I'm going to write this as 2 sine x cos x e to the sine x dx. Now, what is the reason for just reordering these terms? It's because uh, we've got this cos x e to the sine x. Now, you'll notice that this is actually just the derivative of e to the sine x, right? From the chain rule, if we were to differentiate e to the sine x, we would get cos x uh, times e to the sine x, okay? And so this kind of hints that we can use integration by parts, right? Remember our integration by parts formula in general says if we've got the integral of u times v prime with respect to x, where v prime is the derivative of this function v, uh, then that's equal to u times v minus the integral uh, of v times u prime with respect to x. Okay, so we have here something that very much looks like it fits this form, right? Because we have the derivative uh, of a function here, right? And so we could choose this to be our v prime in our integration by parts formula, and we could choose this sine x um, to be u. Uh, we could include this too, it doesn't really matter, we could just think of it as a, as a prefactor, right? So let's do some integration by parts. Our first term, we have this prefactor of 2, um, and the first term was u times v, right? So uh, u is sine x, but v is just e to the sine x, right? That's why we chose our v prime in this way, because we can easily integrate it to get e to the sine x, right? Evaluated 0 and pi over 2. Then we subtract off um, twice the integral, 2 because, because of this 2 here, uh, of, well, integral from 0 to pi over 2, and, okay, so we have uh, v times u prime, so we've got to differentiate our u function here. If we differentiate sine x, we just get cos x, and so we get cos x times v, um, which, remember, was the integral of this thing, which is just e to the sine x, okay? So e to the sine x with respect to x. Uh, okay, so let's make some progress on this. Uh, let's plug in our values um, for this bit that we've already integrated. So we get 2 sine pi over 2. Um, sine pi over 2 is just 1. So we just get 2 times 1 times e to the 1. And then we subtract off 0 because uh, sine of 0 is 0. Then we get, uh, in fact, I didn't even need to write that 0 in. Uh, let's do the integration that we have remaining. The integral of cos x e to the sine x, um, remember we've actually already done that, right? That is just e to the sine x. Okay, so that is just e to the sine x, uh, and we evaluate that as 0 and pi over 2. Um, all right, so this first term that we already had, that is just 2e, right? And then we subtract off 2 times, well, again, sine pi over 2 is 1, so we get e to the 1 minus um, e to the 0, but e to the 0 is 1, right? So we get 2e minus 2e, and then minus here, and then minus here. Um, so they turn into a plus, and we get plus 2 times 1. The 2 e's cancel, and it just turns out to be 2. Pretty nice result there. So again, it's not... Not obvious just from this initial form that you're going to be able to use integration by parts, um, but it ends up working, working out quite nicely.